Welcome to a brand new edition of the Michelle Tafoya podcast. It's, as we're recording this, still June, which is Pride Month. And boy, has this led to a lot of controversy at Dodger Stadium at, at various places and people questioning the use of the word pride to begin with. Well, I have no issue with these parades and such. I, I, I don't like the obscenity of some of them. But I will say this, an acquaintance of mine marched in the parade in New York City. More power to her. She's openly gay. But the sign she held up, it bothered me. It bothered me not because of what it represents, because it demonstrates that people still are trying to use this idea of don't say gay. And it's just, it's like hands up, don't shoot. We'll get into it right after this. Now, it's time for some sanity. It's the Michelle Tafoya Podcast. Okay, so pride parades and the like. We've seen Bud Light in Toronto. We've seen, if you haven't seen that, Google it. We've seen all kinds of demonstrations of pride. Uh, I really, again, it's your life. Live it, love whom you love. Okay. And I don't have a problem with any of that. But as I mentioned in the intro, a friend of mine, an acquaintance of mine, not really a, a, it's a friend of a friend, marched in the parade in New York City and held a sign that said, among other things, protect trans youth and say gay. Like, I think it was at the Oscars where Amy Schumer and some other women got up on stage and they, this is in the wake of the DeSantis legislation in Florida. And they were saying, gay, 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 gay. Like, we're going to say gay. Nobody has banned the word gay. And this is where we get into my real problem with the conversation it has nothing to do with whether or not you're gay, straight, I that that's irrelevant. What this has to do with is facts and honesty and truth and transparency. And this propaganda that keeps getting foisted on us by one side. And if you try to go against it, you're a homophobe, you're a transphobe. Because I support women competing against biological women in athletics, I've been called a transphobe. I hate trans people. They say about me on Twitter. I can handle that. I don't care what you, you don't know me, those of you that say that. So, and, and you're conflating the arguments. And again, this is what bothers me so much. The, the taking a, a phrase or a word or an idea and making it seem far more evil than it is. So we're going to get into it. And some of this has to do with Kamala Harris. She's responsible for promoting a lot of these erroneous ideas. And maybe we'll talk a little bit about her and the idea that if you vote for Joe Biden, you're, Kamala Harris could just as easily become president. So that's coming up. But you want to know the biggest summer secret to a great looking, glowing summer complexion? It's a lot more than drinking water, putting on your SPF. It's having great skincare products like the ones I use from Genucel. As there's sun, there's humidity, there's air conditioning, there's the puffy bags under the eyes, there's dehydrated skin with it. You get those dark spots. All of us go through that, but thankfully, Genucel has a great answer. Introducing Genucel's beautifully curated summer essentials package. This is a limited edition package. It includes Genucel's one of a kind ultra retinol super moisturizer. Love this stuff that uses a powerful plant extract alternative to retinol. So there are no harsh side effects. It's perfectly safe to have on in the sun. Plus, you'll get Genucel's classic skincare therapy for under eye bags and puffiness. They're known for this. And one of my favorites, their concentrated vitamin C serum to nourish your skin for a visibly clear complexion with a glow that will get you compliments every day of the summer. Go to Genucel.com slash Michelle right now. Get your Genucel Summer Essentials Package. And just for the summer, every subscription order includes a customized summer spa gift box totally free. 
Order now and every summer package includes GenuCell's immediate effects also free. With immediate effects, you'll see results in 12 hours or less guaranteed or your money back. So nothing to lose. Do not wait. Go to GenuCell.com slash Michelle. G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash Michelle with one L. M-I-C-H-E-L-E. Go to GenuCell.com slash Michelle. I think you'll be happy that you did. I'm hoping you'll also be happy with this discussion today because uh, some of this stuff just has to be pointed out. I, and I, I don't think it gets pointed out enough. I don't. There are just too many people for political reasons willing to accept someone's statement as though it is fact. And so let's start with the don't say gay bill. Nowhere in that bill, and I've read it, does it say don't say gay. But people like Gabrielle Union, the actress, wife of Dwayne Wade, and Kamala Harris say, oh, I'm afraid to even live in Florida. Really? Really? Okay. So I, I want to read this uh, from the Daily Caller. Vice President Kamala Harris said earlier this week that so-called book bans, and that's in quotation marks, make LGBT people fear for their lives. Okay, the reason book bans is in quotation marks, folks, let's get this straight. Book bans mean books are not available to people in any way, shape, or form. There are no book bans going on in America. Would you approve of Penthouse Magazine? Does that, John, does Penthouse Magazine even exist anymore? Not that you would know necessarily or be a consumer <laughs> of such uh <clears throat> publications, yeah, I it, but yeah, I believe I believe it does. I believe it's still out there. Uh, I, I think I saw an article regarding something in Penthouse within the last year. That's okay. the best I can narrow it down for you, though. Well, that's <laughs> I appreciate your efforts. Yeah. So whether it's Penthouse magazine or porn on video, do you want that in your children's library at school? Let's say K through let's say K through six. You want that there? I don't. Um. I think seeing pornography or certain images at a very young age can be traumatizing for kids. And I really believe that. So there comes an age where kids can handle it, but at some ages they can't. And so, or, or shouldn't be expected to. And these concepts of gender bending, queer theory, whatever, I just think it's too early that like your, your brain doesn't fully develop till you're about 24, 25 years old anyway. So why would you want to do more than, you know, look at Susie run, look at John climb the hill, you know, hop on Fox, Fox in socks, redfish, bluefish. That stuff to me is great. Teaches kids phonetics, teaches them simple words. So why we need or even that some parents would want certain books with drawings in them that border on pornography in a child's library. Now, if the parent wants, they can go to Amazon or a public library and get these books for their kids and bring them home. So the books are not banned. Understand that's a very significant point. So people say, there are 600 pieces of legislation in the country that want to ban books. No, 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 no. They want to move them from one shelf to a more appropriate shelf. You know, when you have a baby and they're an infant, they can only drink liquid because they don't have any teeth. So you don't give a baby something that requires teeth in order to ingest because they will choke on it. All right. So in similar ways, you don't give an eight-year-old porn. Because they don't know what the hell they're looking at, and it can be traumatizing. So if you want to do that with your own kid, knock yourself out. You can. But you cannot just say all public school libraries must have these certain books in them in order to say that books aren't banned. These are books are not banned. Allegations of book banning started after Republican Governor Ron DeSantis signed legislation protecting parental rights in Florida in March of 2022, which led to schools pulling multiple books on the grounds of having explicit content, including a book called Gender Queer, a book called Let's Talk About It, 
and a book called It's Perfectly Normal. Parents across the country have raised objections to books with sexually explicit content in recent years. This fight is not over. When I look at the fact that in our country, we're looking at somewhere around 600 bills being proposed or passed, anti-LGBTQ book bans, a policy approach that is don't say gay, people in fear for their life, people afraid to be, to be, Kamala Harris said in front of the Stonewall Inn in New York City, the location of a violent protest that launched the modern gay rights movement. John, again, she's saying book bans. She's saying anti-LGBTQ. They're saying don't say gay. This is this is twisting the facts in such a way that they are the ones scaring people. Yeah, it's a canard. Nobody's banning books. We are talking about what is appropriate, what is age appropriate content for, uh, you know, prepubescent kids. I mean, puberty is probably traditionally been thought of as a good place to start with basic uh, basic education about, uh, you know, not only, uh, you know, sex education, but hygiene and things like that, because yeah. that's the point at which it makes sense to have these conversations with kids. Um, you know, it, it seems like they've turned these health classes into simply classes all about sex and not yeah. necessarily about health. There is a role for educating kids in health. But I, in order to go along with what the left said, Kamala Harris is gaslighting. None of that stuff is happening. You can still right. get those books. All of the advocates, all of the activists out there have these books. Yeah. It's a question of, are we, I mean, it, it, would you put, you know, they didn't show kids in fifth grade or in, in, in when they're five or six years old, they don't show them all those, all those videos of traffic accidents that they show you in, in driver's ed, because it would right. be entire, it would be entirely inappropriate to show people a, a, a dismembered corpse laying on a, on a street side, unless unless there's some point to it. There's a reason right. you t you show that to 15, 16 year old kids. They are about to drive. Showing that to a seven year old would traumatize them. I think everybody understands that. We don't we don't foist the whole the whole. Kids have to learn to come to terms with things like death. That's not something you just throw at a kid and let them no. wrestle with it without any help because they are not mature enough. It's the same thing with sexually explicit or suggestive material. Again, we have to take the left at what they at, at, at face value, what they believe here, what they're, the, the argument they're making. You essentially have to forget. We have to forget everything we already know. How many stories have we heard about people who are in the news for some horrible act of violence or some some sordid story? And we're told to take into account their childhood because yeah. it was so traumatic. And, right. and I'm not saying we shouldn't. You should th consider things like that when somebody I mean, uh, you could think of any number of examples. I remember there was the female uh, serial killer and, you know, they had a whole movie about how traumatic her life was. You know, uh, that's an extreme example. But we already know that exposing kids to this stuff can cause trauma. It it. it it, it's a wrench in the development of their understanding of the world around them. It, 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 it hinders their ability to get along with what we would usually describe as normal people. Yeah. Y yes. You'll, you'll be right at home at an orgy, but if you try to get, you know, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you, you get what I'm, I'm saying, there's a oh, place I totally for this. Get what I you're mean, saying. I mean, or, orgies are not banned. You know, uh, why would we start with books too? Why wouldn't we start with the, the bizarre sex parties that happen all over this country on any given night of the week? We know that from the whole monkeypox outbreak. We, we know what goes on out there. Nobody's banning this kind of stuff. We're saying no. keep it away from the kids. And again, it's like they expect you to just forget everything you already knew about child development, about how people struggle with things like this, about being exposed to things like this by people who are supposed to love them and protect them. It messes up not just their understanding of the relationship between male and female. It can mess up their understanding of the relationship between everybody. People are not supposed to expose their kids to sexual things. That's not something a caring parent does. So, you know, it, it, it's in some of this. I, I have opened the book in front of me. It's perfectly normal. And this is this is this is stuff i just would never it, put this that, in front of my kids at that well, I've, I've i've seen images from that book the other yeah. the other component here we also know that this is the way that that perverted people act out they're acting out their fetishes when they make a book like that sitting there drawing pictures of kids private parts I know you go back five years ago. We know exactly who did that. It's not, it's not like there's, there hasn't been things like that in the past. It was just roundly rejected as perverted material. 
sitting there and making up an entire book, directing kids how to have sex or yeah. how to how to whatever is is acting out your fetishes. That's what yeah. that is. It's yeah. not educating. It's an adult acting out a fetish and getting yeah, away with it and getting off on getting away with it. It's page nine. What is sex? They've got I mean, they're 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 drawings here. And uh, there, there is so much here um, during sexual intercourse, serious infections such as HPV, all this stuff uh, is in here. And then you get into straight, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning and plus. So all of that at, at a young age, like kids need to kids are not. Some people will say my kid knows they knew it at two years old that they were trans. Okay. Um, that's very unusual. It's very rare. And then you can deal with that in your house. And then you can say to the school or whatever. Yeah. You know, if you want to give permission and say, I'd like my son to be, uh, uh, talk to as a different name and with different pronouns, I'm giving you that permission, but this we've got it the opposite. We've got it as kids go to school a teacher says, hey, you, you seem like, you know, you might be interested in learning about gender. And we can talk about it. And your parents don't have to know. Your parents don't have to know. That is where I get really ticked off. So not only is there this, this push for this stuff at lower levels, but then there's this keeping it from parents part, which is what parents really have a problem with. So book bans not happening, right? We can agree on that. And we just looked at some of these books that really aren't appropriate for that age. And then you've got teachers and administrators saying, we're going to protect the child from their parents. That to me is freaking scary. You know, you and I've talked about that. That's, that's Marxist. It's from the book. Supplant the parents, supplant the family. Uh, we've talked about the context of the Wiggers right now and how they're, uh, essentially doing away with that culture. Uh, family is competition for the state. Yeah. Essentially. And <clears throat> yes, it's just tragic. These kids that are getting prayed, this is preying on kids for political purposes for adults. This is all about the adults. It has nothing to do with the kids well being at all or educating them, making sure they're well-rounded individuals. That's crap. Yeah. I'm sorry. My own mother was from a very small town. She told me, I remember back when I was young, I, we had some conversation about this kind of stuff that you have with your parents to sort of understand the world, the world around you. And she was flabbergasted by, you know, how kids that were 11 and 12, you know, understood the concept of gay, called each other gay, things like that. She said, I didn't I didn't know what that was until I was 18 years old. Yeah. And she left she left her hometown. Mm -hmm. uh, she was not deficient as an adult because of that. That no, didn't lead to some some gap in her life that left her unable uh, unable to, to to navigate life. It's an adult concept, it, and, and it's a concept that seems to me that is being more and more foisted in the education system as the left grows more and more thirsty in this country to control legislation, control policy, control thought, and and that's. Again, what I have a real problem with this article continues LGBT activists called the Florida legislation that don't gay don't say gay bill because it prohibited discussing sexual orientation and gender identity from kindergarten through third grade. Kindergarten through third grade, they just said, look, we don't need to discuss this stuff with six, seven, eight, maybe five year old, nine year old that age range. That's it. Kindergarten through third grade. And it, it wasn't that a teacher couldn't come to school and say, my partner and I went fishing over the weekend or, you know, whatever. It was talking specifically in the curriculum about these things, which, as I discussed in an earlier podcast, is so unimportant relative to, can these kids read? Can they add? Do they know how to write their names are they learning how to spell, how to use correct grammar? Or are we wasting that time on this crap at this early age when they don't need it? Um, yes, yes, we are. And it's funny that it comes from the same side that claims we aren't teaching history. We aren't teaching yes. this and that. And they're taking all of these kids time up with this garbage. Yeah. It's just trash. It's, it's political trash for the adults. That's that's who's benefiting here.
the 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 law in Florida also um, blocked schools, stopped schools from preventing teachers from informing parents about mental health issues in the wake of multiple cases across the country where schools started to secretly transition children. This was going on. Now, you can say, oh, not on a mass scale. Doesn't matter. It has to start at some level, right? And you want to you wanna pull the weed. If kids want to transition, that should be something that goes on with their parents, with the support of their parents. And it's up to the parents to decide how they want to treat that, not the teachers. Teachers, uh, Randy Weingarten, you don't love my kids. And don't tell me you do. And I have teachers who are very fond of my two children. They don't love my children the way that my husband and I do and that our family does. I Don't tell me that. You just look stupid and you look kind of sick because you think that you possess a love for all children in schools. You may love the idea of children. You may love the idea of educating children. But you don't love my children the way that parents love their children. It's, it, it's, it's insulting. I, 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 I just I denounce it. In Montgomery County, Maryland, parents protested at a location of a county school board meeting over the removal of an opt-out for elementary school reading materials involving LGBT themes. Okay, so there was an opt-out. You, you could say, you know what, I don't want my kid involved in that part of the curriculum, so I'm going to opt out. That still left the schools with the ability to teach kids who didn't opt out, right? So some parents said, no, I don't want to opt out. Go ahead. In Montgomery, I'm going to read this to you again. Listen, in Montgomery County, Maryland, parents protested at the location of a county school board meeting over the removal of an opt out. In other words, they were saying, no, parents, you can't opt out anymore. We're going to remove that option. Your child must stay in the class for this stuff. What sticks out to me, Michelle, you started off uh, this episode mentioning Kamala Harris's comments on, yeah. how t on how LGBT folks who there's a lot of overlap there with the teachers are fearing for their lives. Correct. Yeah, that's what she says. Doesn't the fact that they are pushing all of this publicly undercut the idea that they are afraid for their lives at all? They're right out there publicly saying we're going to teach your kids all about queer theory and all this stuff. If they were worried for their lives, they wouldn't be out there saying that kind of stuff. It'd be all underground, yeah. right? They, they might be wise, in fact, to actually worry about, you know, their safety since what they want to do is sexualize children. That would be a wise decision if that's your goal. It would be wise to worry about that because people are not going to respond to that. They aren't worried about their safety. That's why they're right out there on the cutting edge, pushing this every place they can get, every every uh, television camera they can get in front of, every organization and institution that they can infect with this crap. They're going for it. I don't think they're worried about their safety at all. I think I think I think the way they behave about this, the, the, the way that they behave actually indicates they aren't worried at all. They don't think anything's <laughs> going to happen at all, I think. I, I, that's a, that's a, that's a good point. Um, and again, people denounce this again, we, we're calling it the don't say gay bill and I shouldn't, I should find out the actual name of the bill and replace it because that's not what it is. That's not what it is. Uh, but they, they're doing it cause they don't like Ron DeSantis and they're doing it because they, they want to be able to target people as homophobes, transphobe, every phobe in the, in the book. And 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 stop this argument. And uh, yeah, um, at least 16 states have banned or restricted sex change procedures on children. U.S. News reported the American Civil Liberties Union has sued in multiple states to block the laws. Some detransitioners, including Chloe Cole, who has been a really outspoken detransitioner, have filed lawsuits against medical professionals who carried out so-called gender affirming procedures when they were minors. So think about, I, I, do, does anyone know? I mean, do you know? If you know a minor, <laughs> you know that there's so much going on in their bodies and their minds and their brains. So much. There, there, there's growing depression since 
the COVID lockdowns. And I would I would argue, and many people have since the advent of social media and since social media is taking over kids' lives, there is mounting depression. And for some kids, they want to belong to something. And so they find someone online to belong with and they, well, maybe I'm trans. I know a child in my community who two years ago proclaimed she was trans. She was about 12 at the time. That ended after about six months. Some kids are trans. That's, that's, that's a fact. I'm not denying this. But is the best way to resolve or handle this issue by immediately cutting off their breasts or trying to create a vagina for them? I mean, this mutilation of their bodies, which some have come to regret, is so tragic and unnecessary at this age. Even Caitlyn Jenner would tell you that. She who waited till well into her 50s to do anything, phys physiologically, I, maybe not anything, but look, we knew the person as Bruce Jenner for decades, and then the transition occurred. And even she would tell you, this isn't appropriate for little kids. Little kids don't know, and, and little kids, I include into the, up to there is a reason we don't let kids drive until they're 16. There is a reason we don't let kids vote until they're 18. There is a reason we don't let kids drink until they're 21. There is a reason for parental restrictions on films and on and on and on. Because parents should have the right to raise their kids as they see fit. But you notice now, people are trying to put these books in schools and then say, oh, if you move them off that shelf into another, to an older library, older kids library, that's banning books. That is not banning books. That infuriates me. And the fact that the vice president of the United States of America is repeating this, that's real misinformation, folks, that books are being banned. No, you can go to Amazon. You can go to a library. You can find these books if you want to find them and introduce them to your kids. That's up to you. Whether or not they should be in public school libraries for third graders is another matter altogether. And so if you move that book, that is not make it banned. Uh, this pisses me off so much because, again, you have public officials doing this. I'm going to make a real sharp turn here real quick because of the way that politicians twist things. It's, it, it's disgusting. And I'll give you an example. Nancy Pelosi was approached by a reporter in the hallway the other day in, in Congress at Capitol Hill. And she was asked, does it bother you that all this stuff about Hunter Biden is coming out, that there's this text allegedly that says Hunter is sitting next to his father, then the vice president of the United States, and saying to this person in China, why aren't you doing our bidding? Does that bother you, Madam? She's no longer, I, I was going to say Madam Secretary or Madam Speaker. She's no longer that. Does that bother you, Congresswoman? No, she responded. You know what bothers me? That MAGA Republicans are trying to restrict your reproductive rights. She said it to a female reporter. Reproductive health, she may have said. Reproductive health. See, instead of calling it abortion, now they call it reproductive health. And and I, I'm pro-choice with limits, with limits. But to, to call it reproductive health, that's, again, it's like, well, there's global freezing. Well, there's global warming. No, let's just call it climate change. That covers everything. And that's not to say these things aren't happening. It's to say that the way that politicians twist the words to make you buy in, to just shepherd you all into these flocks of sheep and follow them because they tell you because, oh, Nancy Pelosi is smarter than everyone else in the room and she's more powerful than everyone else in America. So she gets to tell you that your reproductive health is being assaulted by MAGA Republicans. That's the new, you can't just be a Republican anymore. You're called a MAGA Republican. Go ahead, John. 
one thing that sticks out to me is by pushing all this stuff on, on society broadly, I just, I think if, 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 if the left got what they want here and you have this broad embrace of LGBTQ plus. Uh, life plus lifestyles, I don't know how we have anything past B because B is by making mm-hmm. it a binary choice. But anyways, right. um, I think one of our guests uh, made that point last week, uh, yeah. Shamika. Um, I, I don't understand the left's, the, the left's entire domestic policy position is a huge safety net for everybody. We are going to see, we are going to see birth rates continue to plummet. There aren't going to be enough people reproducing. She talks about reproductive health, Nancy Pelosi. I'm concerned we're not going to have enough people, period, to actually pay for all the things we're promising people, things like social security, especially if you're encouraging people to have same sex relationships, which is essentially what they're doing. You don't ever hear anyone out there. Well, you do. You hear people on the right talking about the virtues of you know, heterosexual relationships, they kind of are the future. If we want to, you know, if we want to support our, 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 our robust safety net for everybody, if we want social security, you know, things like things like social security for people in my generation, we should be cranking out as many kids as we possibly can, but instead we're fixated on, on same sex, everything. It, it, I, I've said it before. It's very bizarre for somebody like myself, a fairly average straight male, all of this, like I think about, like, what if I made my, my, my platform on how much I love TNA and then went into schools and sat and talked to and talked to. No, why not? Why not go into, you know, the third grade class, find a bunch of eight, nine year old girls and describe to them how much I love TNA and how that is that is the center of my politics. You know, that's what they're doing here. And beyond that, again, if we're if we're stressing how great same sex everything is or these bizarre alternative lifestyles that people are turning to choose, we're probably going to get more of it, which is going to continue to undercut the birth rate. And I don't know how you continue to give robust benefits to everybody through Social Security, through uh, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, with welfare programs. How do you fund all that? How do you keep doing that well, when, when the birth rate keeps shrinking because yeah. everybody's gay? John, you're overlooking one very critical fact. Help me out. Men can have babies. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. Everyone we got a ready, can have babies. No, we look, have a ready-made I, solution. Yeah, that's men can have babies, and we can have babies outside the womb now in these little, you know, baggies. Yeah, look, hot I, pocket I, babies. Yeah, it's there's a lot here. There's a lot here to chew on. But what what for me, the reason I wanted to talk about this today was the simple term banning books. It is not happening. No matter what Kamala Harris tells you, no matter what Gabrielle Union tells you, books are not being banned. If you move a book from the low shelf on your bookcase at home to the high shelf, so your little one can't get to it, that didn't ban the book. It made it less accessible to little eyes that don't need to see that book right now. And if that makes me sound, you know, square and back to the fifties and all the rest. I, I, I don't care. I didn't teach my children those things until they were ready. I, I don't have all the answers, but I do know that we went for thousands and thousands of years without this kind of teaching in school and everyone still figured out how to have sex. Huh? Everyone still figured it out even without teaching queer theory and all the rest. And, and the other big part of this is why is this so being emphasized in schools when we can't even teach our kids to be proficient at reading and math? That freaking breaks my heart for every child out there. My kids are lucky. Not every kid is lucky. And it, we're teaching them about their pronouns and whether or not they think they're trans ahead of, not in every classroom, but it sure seems like that emphasis is there. And the emphasis is no longer on learning how to freaking read or add. <laughs> That's got disaster written all over our future, folks. All right. Really, if you do vote for Joe Biden, Kamala Harris is right there waiting in the wings and given the the direction of our president's health it would not surprise me if she had to step in this uh democratic side of the 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 election is going to get really interesting 
here over the next few months. All right. Enough about that. I went all over the map here. I thank John for joining me in that. John Berg, my producer. As always, folks, be brave, do good, and we will see you next time. (laughs) 